All right, so before we go any further, no, this game is not a rivalry. That's not what this video is about. The video is about the fact that this could become a rivalry and that we as college football fans have the opportunity to watch a game become a rivalry organically, which is something truly special given the age and longevity of most rivalries in college sports today. Of course, the game that I'm talking about is between the Texas Tech Red Raiders and the Oklahoma State Cowboys of the Big 12 Conference. This game has a few nicknames already, whether you ascribe to the Dust Bowl or the Xerox Bowl. For the sake of the video, I'm going to refer to it as the Dust Bowl because I feel like that's the cooler and more historically relevant nickname between the two, but the nickname of Xerox Bowl does carry some significance. Let's get into the background of these two gunslingers. The two schools first played each other on the gridiron, where most rivalries are forged, in 1935 as Oklahoma A&M and Texas Technological College. They played a three-game stretch in three years, with the Matadors, as they were called through 1936, winning each game 14 to nothing, 12 to nothing, and 14 to 6. They didn't play again until 1940, kicking off a seven-game series where the two teams tied before the Pokes earned their first win in 1942, winning 9 to 6. After 1946, the game took a brief break before returning in 1953. A few ties and wins later, and the game took its next break after 1957. A two-game series was played in 1965 and 1966, with the Red Raiders taking both. After a few isolated games in the 70s, the game was not played again until 1988, but this time it would take place in Tokyo, Japan, as a part of the Coca-Cola Classic Series. Oklahoma State, led by Heisman running back Barry Sanders and quarterback Mike Gundy, survived a shootout against the Red Raiders, led by Billy Joe Tolliver and head coach Spike Dykes, father of current TCU head coach Sonny Dykes, 45 to 42. Sanders would accept his Heisman Trophy for the 1988 season while in Japan over telecom. The game would be played again the following year in Stillwater, except the Red Raiders would win 31 to 15. Despite the relatively close proximity between Stillwater and Lubbock, these two teams weren't in the same conference until 1996. The Pokes were members of the Missouri Valley from 1926 to 1956 and have been members of the Big 12 and its predecessors since 1960. Texas Tech was a member of the Border Conference from 1932 to 1956, and then was an independent until they joined the Southwest in 1960. But the dissolution of the Southwest in 1995 led to them being a part of the creation of the Big 12 Conference in 1996, and being placed in a Southern Division with Oklahoma State. Prior to 1996, the Red Raiders led the series 13 to 7 to 3. But since 1996, these two schools have played each other every season. Aside from two exceptional blowouts, 2000, when the Red Raiders swept the Cowboys under the rug 58 to nothing, and 2011, where the should have been title contending Cowboys and Brandon Whedon torched Lubbock off the map 66 to 6, the game results have been much more competitive. But just from looking at these margins of victories, you can tell that the games themselves have not been. In fact, since 1996, there have been a total of nine one score games between these two schools, most of those being by seven points. As of the end of 2023, the game has evened out significantly to 24, 23, and 3. Of course, just playing a team regularly does not a rivalry make. And as one can tell from asking the fan bases of these teams, there's no rivalry here. The games either aren't competitive enough to forge a rivalry, or the two teams genuinely like each other too much. They're very similar programs, but it's that similarity that perhaps may breed some contempt. Let me explain. Remember how I said this game is sometimes called the Xerox Bowl? Well, that mostly comes from the tech side of the equation, and there's a reason for it. Tech fans believe that Oklahoma State has stolen a couple traditions from them, hence Xerox. Robert Jones at tech fan site Reckham Red notes them out here. Oklahoma State's Spirit Rider, debuting in 1984, is supposedly stolen directly from Tech's Masked Rider, which debuted in 1954 which definitely isn't stolen itself directly from the Mark of Zorro, the 1920 film. And the pistols firing hand signal, named in 2001 but potentially existing long before that, is supposedly stolen from Tech's guns up signal, also just finger guns, in 1971. I mean, come on, Tech, you moved from an awesome name like Matadors to Red Raiders. It's clear the real robbery here is you guys against the sports world. Jokes aside, another reason this game may organically become a rivalry over time is that, for lack of a better term, these two programs are jilted lovers. Oklahoma State really has one rival, Oklahoma. 
Bedlam is the game that matters to them, and with the Sooners moving to the SEC in 2024, they no longer have any in-conference rivalries. Their only other official rivalry is with Tulsa. Games with schools like Kansas State and Iowa State, their old Big 8 conference mates who similarly focus on agriculture and engineering, suffer from the same problem games against Tech do. The teams largely aren't competitive at the same time. Looking at Tech, they lose their big game against Texas for the Chancellor Spurs at the same time. Texas is largely the main rival for the Red Raiders, even if those feelings, similar to Bedlam, aren't necessarily reciprocated. Unless Michael Crabtree is involved, that is. The main difference is that Tech, unlike OSU, has rivals in conference. Their game against TCU is known as the Battle for the Saddle, or the West Texas Championship, and the two teams play for possession of a saddle. TCU's main rival is Baylor, though, and likely doesn't see Tech as too large of a rival in their own right. Games against Houston have also been chippy recently, and Tech has played Baylor more often than any other opponent. That game is referred to as the generic Texas Shootout, or um, the Butt Bowl, because... Yeah. Still, like I said earlier, Baylor cares much more for TCU than Tech. When Arizona and Arizona State rejoin the conference, there's a chance some old border conference rivalries will spark, but having been so long ago in the past, that feels downright unlikely. So this leaves Oklahoma State and Texas Tech largely without dance partners for 2024 onward. Will those teams magically dislike each other from the get-go? Uh, it isn't exactly impossible. Texas A&M and LSU played each other a few times in the past, but the game didn't reach rivalry status until the Aggies joined the SEC, when their normal rivalry game with Texas was no longer scheduled. It isn't improbable that, when their primary rivals are no longer available, teams will look for other ones with history to channel their hatred. That being said, it'll take some time to see whether or not this game will become a rivalry, or just another Farmageddon, a game between similar conference opponents that's more of a joke between those two teams than it is a real legitimate rivalry. The Big 12 manufactured Farmageddon already, there's a real chance they find a way to manufacture the Dust Bowl as well. Personally, I've always been a fan of having the four ag schools play each other every year. Tech, OSU, K-State, and Iowa State, for something like the Quadrangle of Hate in the Big Ten. Call it the Quadrangle of Ag instead. They play for like a bushel of wheat or something. In that Quadrangle, you'd have Farmageddon and the Dust Bowl, kind of like the Big Ten's Quadrangle having Minnesota, Wisconsin, and Nebraska, Iowa. There's no real reason to do that, but it'd be very cool for the schools involved. But I'll leave it up to you guys, especially the Poke and Raider fans. Do you think these two teams will eventually become rivals? Will the Big 12 end up attempting to manufacture one like they did with Iowa State and K-State in 2009? Could you ever see this game becoming hostile, as opposed to just two bros hanging out except one has to lose at the end of the night? Let me know in the comments below.